a marginal improvement over where we're, you know, where we were 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Why is that? It's not difficult to explain. When you look at the underlying economics, it turns out that if you know gas costs 50 cents or a dollar or a dollar fifty or even two dollars, the 250, yeah, you care about electric vehicles, but you know your incentive isn't necessarily there. If gas goes to four dollars. $4.50, or if gas costs 8 or $10, like it does in some areas of Europe, all of a sudden, things like mileage become very, very important. All of a sudden, you care a lot more, because the economic you know, sort of incentives, the economic change becomes, you know, hits you sort of where it hurts. And this is the case with open source. You know, I believe, and I can prove, you know, on, certainly on paper, that things like neutral expect, you know, respect are important. But I can tell you factually, and if you look at this company after company after company, the economics behind open source and the changes uh, that it will rent, you know, that it will essentially impact in your business, the, the impact that it will have over time is enormous. So we begin to see this, you know, sort of just over the last year, right? So I mentioned earlier that in this presentation the Hadoop example. So Google comes out and says, you know, hey, we have this, uh, uh, you know, here are these two papers, uh, the MapReduce paper and the Google File System paper. And Doug Cutting and, uh, and a bunch of other folks at Yahoo go off and they build Hadoop. Hadoop ends up in Cloudera, uh, which Ping talked about you know, a little bit um, in his presentation. This was, you know, essentially a model that more or less worked. Uh, Matt Cutts, you know, who's a Google employee, however, uh, when TensorFlow was re uh, released, noted a... a Sam, I'm sure, is in here somewhere. He's up next. 
Uh, talking to Sam Ramsey when he was at Microsoft, talking to Jason Matisoff, his predecessor in that role. Uh, you know, Microsoft, you have pockets of people at Microsoft who understood, you know, that the advantages of open source, understood its applicability, or encouraging its usage within Microsoft. It was very, very difficult to get any hit. Uh, it was very, very difficult to have that conversation uh, with the company. And you now you see things like, hey, we love Linux. Uh, we're supporting it on our cloud platform. We're going to port our database to, to Linux. Uh, you know, they take, you know, very much like Google did with uh, TensorFlow, they take, uh, you know, core assets like CNTK. They make those available as open source software. .NET is open source. So this is the company, again, going back to our generational diagram, that literally set us on the course of closed software. And they are increasingly and more frequently coming to the conclusion that the best economic decision for the company is to release things as open source. And I don't mean it in any binary sense. None of these companies are looking at this and saying all of our, all of our software has to be open source. But more often than not, when they look at it, and they sit down and they run the numbers and they consider the pros and cons, their decision becomes obvious. And it's not just the folks shipping software. I don't know if any of the Capital One folks are in the room. Uh, this is a project you may have seen. It's essentially a, a DevOps dashboard. You know, it's an open source product from an end user company. You know, we've seen these you know, sort of sporadically in the past. This is the same kind of understanding, the same kind of realization that you know, previously, and I've, I've built these you know, for companies as a consultant, not these projects specifically, but you know, essentially proprietary projects that, that uh, you know, companies, enterprises would treat as their secret sauce and some special advantage they had over the market. Well, you know, the fact is, in most cases, they weren't. In most cases, you're going to get more economic benefit out of you know, releasing it as open source software. So, basically, the, the net for me is, is that you know, the thing that's going to take us forward, the thing that's going to you know, continue to advantage the movement, is having the mutual respect, you know, having the, the fundamental values, the moral values around inclusiveness and diversity, but really understanding that these all sit on a practical foundation, a, a you know, bedrock foundation of, from an economic perspective, it's just, it's a good decision. This isn't something that's strictly a moral imperative. Uh, this is the right thing to do, you know, both morally and in terms of running your business. And with that, I'm done. I think I'm only